This is Josiah Bancroft. I'm the author of the Books of Babel. The third book in the series, The Hot King, is available for purchase today. It is not the end of the series. The series will be a tetralogy when all is said and done. Uh, be the first in your family to be cool. Go buy it right now. Warning. The following may contain Manticore. Join fantasy authors Phil Tucker, Tamandra Whitecastle, David Benham, Benedict Patrick, and Josiah Bancroft as they roll dice and take on the bad guys in a game of Dungeons and Dragons. Five authors, five worlds, one adventure. It's time to get crit faced. Previously on Crit Faced, having dealt with the nest of vampires in the coffin maker's home, the town guards arrive. None too pleased with the violence within the town, the heroes are ordered to report to the burgomaster straight away. Yay. You guys have refused to surrender your weapons to the town's guard despite their demands, but you are coming with them to see the burgomaster. <clears throat> Or so you thought, because where the guards actually uh, escorted you to was the town guard garrison, um, uh, where you were ushered into a, a lovely cell. Now, these guys, I don't know if you recall, they have been quite intimidated by you. Uh, Master Sonnet in particular, your persuasion tactics uh, are what uh, convinced the guys that you were to keep a hold of your weapons in the first place. So you are basically led untouched with some very nervous people around you into the cell where you are told to wait for the Baron. Um, and and then morning rises and you're still there. So. Does that mean we've had a long rest? You have indeed had a long rest. Lord Talper, hey. you, uh, may now you are now conscious again. Everyone's back up to full hit points. All your spells are recovered. But you are confined. Now guys... You have no doubt that uh, you could get out of here uh, if you wanted to, but you have been told to wait for the Baron. Hmm. Well, I'd definitely like to tell him a thing or two about this wonderful town. <laughs> That's a winning idea right there. <laughs> He's the horse head festivals and all that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's he's really got something going on. Yeah. Um, it's strange that you, you mentioned festivals because um you know the sun has been in the sky for uh you know maybe an hour or two now, and then you start to hear um noises uh from from the the, the, the small uh barred window, um the only barred window in your cell that um uh, you can hear some noises. Sounds like a bit of commotion somewhere in the distance. Um, from what you gather, the garrison that you've been moved uh, been moved to is somewhere in the south of the town. Um, and you reckon, just by your judgment of what you know of Falaki at the moment, you reckon it's coming from somewhere in the direction of the, the marketplace. Um, and it sounds like a, a large congregation of people uh, are there. Uh, and eventually you remember that today uh, is the, the festival of the blazing sun. Uh, and of course, what you must hear are the sounds of celebration of the, the people um, taking part in this in the festivities that you were told about when you, you first came to Falaki. Can we tell whether the uh, the sky looks any, from where we are, whether the sky looks any brighter than it normally does on its usual overcast days? I mean, it's overcast. It is overcast. In fact, um, Kellen, you reckon, just judging on your primal survival instincts you think it, it looks like rain um and in fact you know even as you consider that it does start to spit a bit uh, from the sky so, okay um, the, um as you guys are are sitting there uh, clearly not talking to each other it seems um a magpie comes uh, and flies and sits uh, on the window sill oh. does anyone speak magpie <laughs> Um, so I, I I don't I don't mean to like suppose, but that may be racist. Uh, <laughs> species. Uh, species. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I think we should. Uh, uh, last time, uh, Magpie had some very sanguine things to say. I think he was a very sane person. So I mean, <clears throat> not person, of course, but perhaps we should hear if he has any uh, wisdom to share. So the, the magpie, uh, at your words, Jean, the magpie um, sort of moves its head to the side, gives you, you know, looks at you with one of its beady eyes, uh, opens its beak, and it says, 
I don't see how you can keep your end of the bargain locked up in here. Uh, um, no. The voice is familiar to you. It's it's must be Irwin. No, we can't. I think I think we'd be very we'd be very hard pressed to. <laughs> oh, if only we had a key. <laughs> this is but a temporary situation. As soon as the Baron speaks with us, we'll explain the actions that resulted in the death of a vampire, and then be on our way. No, you have no need to give excuses to me. I've already asked around, and I, I've got a pretty good idea about what it was you were up to. And as a, as a citizen of this town, I, I'd like to personally thank you for, for what you were trying to do for us. Finally! That's, ex- that's all that we want is a good thanks and a hot meal and a bag of gold and go home. Yes, home is would be very nice. Mm. But uh, we appreciate the thanks. Okay. Um, he, you know, his eye, you know, it's, it's a very unusual experience because, um, you know, he is, he, it's just a magpie, you know, it is a magpie. And, and obviously the, these words are coming out of its mouth, but it just, you even looking at it, it seems unnatural. Like it just doesn't have the body parts to make these noises that it's making, but it, it still seems to be happening and behaving exactly as you'd expect a magpie to behave. Uh, and um, so he, his eye continues to dart around just as if it's you know, looking for food, basically, uh, you know, on your persons. Um, but, but Urban's voice keeps coming out of, uh, out of its mouth or out of its beak. And he says, I, I have no doubt that you will keep your word and you'll, as soon as you can, make your way to... Uh, look to my father to see why we've lost contact with him. Um, just as such, uh, I would like to keep to my word as well. Um, of course, our deal is that I will start to send my people uh, out specifically to look for your Irina um, once you return with word from my father. Uh, however, we have already had sightings, um, and I th- I felt obliged to come and inform you before you left. Uh, we think we know where she is. That's exciting. How's she look? Is she well? No, I am afraid that is where the good news ends. Because uh, although we think we know where she went, it, it is somewhere that we cannot follow. Um, one of my scouts came in uh, yesterday, uh, very late in the evening, and told me about a commotion that took place in the Fistani camp just uh, to the southwest of Falaki. We are not welcome there. And uh, it seems that a few days ago, coinciding exactly with when you arrived in the town, that a party of Falaki riders picked up a young woman uh, on the road uh, to the town and instead carried her off to their campsite. Uh, Of course, we are... a great relationship with those people. I'm I'm sure they... (laughs) And over easily. They are not particularly fond of us either, which is why I cannot get you any further information, but rest assured yes. that we are doing our best to to watch the camp as much as possible. And what I thought you would want to know. Well, we do. No, thank you. That's that's, that's wonderful. That's, that's, that's good. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's better to be informed. <laughs> it's good to have a, a bearing where to go yes. next. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, uh, not to be not to be rude, but uh, you don't happen to know anything about magic daggers or vampire killing implements, you know, of any sort. I think the the only things in Valaki that have any kind of reputation for killing vampires are currently sitting in this cell. <laughs> That's right. I, I have heard about your your deeds, but I think you might find upon your release that I'm not the only one who has heard of you by now. Are you saying we should expect a parade? Um, I, the, I do love a parade. The, the magpie gives a kind of cackle, um, almost. Uh, <laughs> and he says, well, knowing Valaki, it's, there's every possibility that could be in your future. <laughs> I, I need to get my cravat. <laughs> oh, oh, finally, a parade. I've, I've been it, needing one. Uh, <clears throat> the magpie says, Speaking of parades, it is mandatory that I attend and bring my children, so I must away to the festival. Of course. Uh, I, I hope your confinement is as short as possible, and I hope that uh, the news for Irina is better than it currently seems. Would you 
Would you mind if we saw to Irina's predicament before going to the vineyard? I can understand that. It is on your way. It is on your way. Uh, the camp is considerably closer than the the, uh, the winery. Good. That's good to know. And thank you again for bringing work. Not at all. And, and best of luck, friends. And with that, uh, Irwin flies off. See, McRag, this is why you don't go caca at strange birds. You just, just don't... I thought I was speaking his language. Oh, my God. Oh. I didn't know he could talk. Oh, we're trying to get out of these messes, and, and you keep throwing us deeper into them. I just, I don't know. We're going to take you to finishing school, my friend. Finishing school. <laughs> okay. So are we going to stay here? Well, do we want to wait, or do we yeah. want to break out of here? Can we have a long rest? I mean, I, don't, I have no spells left. Um, I I'm, I'm right. You've had, very you've had a long rest. You've had a long rest. We had a long rest? Yes. This, is, this is the morning after the night before. So. Oh, I'm sorry. I slept through that. Yes. <laughs> uh, I feel very rested, and I have all my spells back. And yes, let's, let's escape. Uh, I, I think that would make us fugitives. And that would I'll make just, come, uh, coming mm. back to Valaki a little bit more tricky. Okay, We've already so... waited well, all night. I, I say we just... Give give the Baron a few more hours to come around, and if not, we can break out and go find him, and then tell him to come see us, return to the cell, and wait. Um... Well, would anybody like to hear a song? Um, any any interest to have a concertina? We could sing in the round. No one. No. I hate you, no. I hate you all. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Is there a guard close by? Yep, there are two, uh, not far away, standing uh, a bit uh, away from the entrance to your cell. Do they like I music? Have, they have their backs to you. I uh, rattle the bars with my cane to get their attention. Um, one of them, uh, you can see, turns around to glance down the corridor back towards you, and the other one sort of elbows him, uh, and, and you can see whispers harshly to them, and they, they both stare forward again. <laughs> Do you know when the Baron is coming? We are running short on time. Um, and this time they, they both kind of look back at you warily and um, they're sort of whispering to each other intently and glancing in your direction again. They don't say anything else. Firebolt. <clears throat> so rude. A cautionary firebolt. Uh I, I, I knock on the, the bars again, getting a little bit more upset this time. And I say, I say, I asked you a question there, young man. Um, and, and you can see, you know, they, they seem quite nervous now. Um, so they, they have a little huddle. Uh, and one of them um, sort of sets down his spear and sort of runs off up the corridor. Uh, and the other one you know, holds up a hand and, and motions with, with a finger. Um, you know, as if saying, you know, one moment, one moment, but doesn't actually speak to you. Um, can I try a persuasion roll? Yeah, yeah. I I say, uh, good sir. Why don't you come here and inform us as to what is going on? We we honestly don't have enough time to stand around in the cell for much longer. That's not going to do it. So an eight. Um, and he he kind of glances in your direction, nods, and then you know turns away and shuffles on up the corridor further away from you. Oh, the indignity. All right, I'm going to cast a minor illusion in which I make it appear as if our door has swung open. Can my, can I can never remember? Is minor illusion? Does it kind of do that size wise with the the amount of it, illusion it can create? Let's take a quick look. I, I think so. I mean, I, 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 I like it, but I, I can I know we've made mistakes with minor illusion in the past, and I can't recall. I, I haven't reported them. <laughs> <laughs> Minor illusion. Here we go. Okay. You create a sound or an image of an object within range last for a duration. A duration. The illusion also ends if you dismiss it. If you create sound, create an image such as a chair, money focus, small chest. It be no larger than a five foot cube. Is the door under five feet? It is under five feet. Uh, no, sorry. It's, it's uh, No, it's not under five feet. It's, it's, it's taller ah. than five feet. But, you know, you could... I don't know. You could do it like in like a barn door. The lower half swings out. Right, right. I mean, like the the point is that he's going to look back and see the doors open okay. and maybe come running to to, to you know, do something. Okay. So well, what what do we do then? 
What's the plan at that point when we have him here? Firebolt. <laughs> so are, are we doing this? Are we going for the half door illusion? No, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm I'm just spitballing here with my colleagues. I just feel like um, if we're trying to get him to engage, if we were to make it appear as so we could escape, he would have to engage or. Maybe he may just run pull over. out his sword. He may get agitated. He may engage in ways that are not conducive to becoming a friend. As we are discussing this, the the guard that ran away jogs back down the corridor, uh, and behind him um, is uh, comes an older man, uh, bald, um, maybe in his mid to late fifties. Uh, just a, a, a very tightly cropped grey beard, uh, wearing sort of scholarly robes. Um, and, uh, he looks thoroughly unimpressed. He's carrying a big ledger, uh, and he walks past the guards uh, and, and up to your uh, cell. Uh, I cast a charm person the second he turns the corner. <laughs> okay. Uh, Wisdom saving throw. Okay. Yeah. DC uh, spell save DC is uh, fourteen. Okay, Not so bad. he fails. He fails. So uh, I'm again charm person. What? Uh, he gives us all his gold immediately. Uh-huh. Um, uh, if it, it is charmed by you until the spell ends, which is an hour, or you or your companions do harmful things to it. The charmed creature regards you as a friendly acquaintance. When the spell ends, the creature does know that it was charmed by you. Ah, wait. Um, oh, we all we all knew that bit. That that's the. <laughs> I keep forgetting that. Yeah. Part. Are you still are you still casting it? Uh, no, uh, probably, probably not. That's unfortunate. Oh, we need we need one right. town we can come okay. back to without the <laughs> without the charm without the charm person. Then he he, he takes out a, a quill and an ink pot. Uh, he places it on a small shelf just far enough away that you can't reach at it. Uh, he dips the quill into the ink pot, opens up his big ledger, and he say, and he he looks at you and he goes, "Now, which one of you will go first? You there, big man." And he points at Kellen. Ah, oh, tell me. Calvin pointed himself. I thought he would. Okay. <laughs> tell, tell me your details. Who are you? I'm... ASL. I, I, I'm, I'm a barbarian. <laughs> I see. And why does that make you particularly equipped to deal with vampires, Mister Barbarian? I kill things for a living. Uh, yeah. We, my my companions and I, we found ourselves in this strange place and we feel compelled to to rid it of its evils. I see. <laughs> and that uh, large axe you carry, is that your killing implement? Well, I mean... Axes don't kill people. People who swing axes kill people. <laughs> I make I cast precedentation so his axe gleams menacingly for a moment. We all consider it. I like it. Thank you. And what about you? And he points at um, Lord Talfron. How are you uh, equipped to deal with vampires? I uh, shoot my cuffs and throw a, a Firebolt against the wall. I see. Do you find that particularly effective? Mm. To be honest, I did think it would be more effective, but in the last fight, they they seemed to shrug off quite a a few of the firebolts I threw their way. But they weren't pleased either. I looked at the others for their verdict on that one. He, he he kind of frowns at your words and he and he looks at his page again and, and he looks back up at you and he says, That doesn't quite ring off the tongue as well as people who wield yeah. axes kill people. Mm. <laughs> yes, well uh, you see, when it comes to matters of the intellect, sometimes the arguments are more subtle than kill people with axe. I see. And what about you? And he points at uh, Master Sonna. Me? Yes. Why I, Why are you a vampire killer? I have seen great evil here in these lands, and I have been blessed by the Morning Lord so that my touch is unbearable to these 
foul creatures. Oh. Um, I feel we're like, like Raven Love's got talent. <laughs> <laughs> you find that particularly effective. Oh, it was pretty effective, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Hmm, the unbearable touch. Interesting. And um, what about you? And he looks at um, Jean. Uh, my name is Jean Malamé, and I am an actor, uh, really. I mean, uh, I, 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 a master of none in many ways. Um, uh, yes, and uh, I feel like that's, that's pretty much my calling card. And they, and they, you know, the man looks confused again. And an an actor. Yes. How, yes. How, mm-hmm. Please, yes. please explain how. All right. That <clears throat> I'm going to sh- demonstrate how this will work with the uh, m- m- vampires. Uh, I cast a minor illusion where I appear to grow a wolf's head, uh, snarling and 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 yawing and looking droolingly menacingly. Oh! Oh my goodness! Yes, 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 I can see yes. that. All mm. part of the act. <laughs> All part so, of the act, I like. It. Yes, yes. Interesting. <laughs> the Baron is finishing at the festivities now. And you, you she, he sort of glances outside, and it is pouring outside by this point. Uh, you know, the sky's become even grayer, even though it must still be just about midday. Um, after the festivities are done with, he will send for you. Why, why, why not? Why not now? I mean, I feel like there's something that we all here enjoy, and that's festivities. Yes. Well, as you must imagine, your escapades last night took us all a bit unawares, but it shall be dealt with in time. We oh. saved the town from a number of vampires. Are you serious there, young man? Yes. We do not have time for this. It shall be dealt with soon. Do not worry. I will tell the Baron of your pressing concerns. Thank you for your time. Uh, but, but, but before you go, before one, one second. Hit him with the firebolt. Firebolt him. Um... <clears throat> Good sir, what is your name? Yes, my name is Malik. Malik. Um, could we take a rain check with the Baron? Come back, say, in a couple of days to discuss the appropriate compensation for our heroics. Oh, no, I don't think that would be appropriate. That's not my decision to make. The Baron will see you shortly. I shall tell him that the heroes need to... Move on in their we, heroics, as it were. Can, uh, can someone I turn to my friends. I turn to my friends. I say, "Should we? Should I get us out of here?" Yes, please get us out of here. Change his mind. Okay. Okay. So then I I, I, I cast a charm person spell that I had almost cast before. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes, and and he succeeds. Uh, so you succeed. Yes. Uh, and you see his demeanor very slightly changed. You know, there's almost a the inkling of a smile on his face, but otherwise he he's just. He's probably so he's a terrible a, friend. He's I, awful. Yeah, honestly, all um, all evidence suggests that you are correct. Yes, this man does not return books. <laughs> <laughs> For the worst. I say, um, Master yes. Malik. Yes, Master Malik. Let's yes. let's speak as, as friends, as confreres. Let's let's confabulate for a moment. Let us understand that this situation is unfortunate, and that we acted for the. Good of Valaki. Yes. And in doing so, we expose a great menace, and we are therefore not necessarily the enemy of the people. I think everyone would be in agreement, yes. So if I give you my word as a lord, if I I shake your hand, I thrust my hand through the bars, like so. Yes. I shake his hand. And I, I vow to you that we will return and speak with the Baron in person and explain the situation, but that we do have another vampire-related emergency just outside the walls of Valaki that must be dealt with. Mm-hmm. We will go do what we do best. I, I shoot off another firebolt at the wall. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then we will come back to finish off this conversation with the Baron. You have my word as a lord and as a friend, of course. Yes. If you just let us out of this cell... We will return shortly. Hmm. I completely believe you and take you at your word. 
Just as much as I believe that if I went against the Baron's orders and let you away, even though I have full trust in you, the Baron would have me in the stocks until your return. And you can imagine that is not something that I would particularly anticipate. Hmm, what can we do in this situation? Perhaps a, a more comfortable uh, place to await the Baron's arrival? Would that be suitable for you? That's a step in the right direction. I yes, think. I think I like comfort. I believe the Baron was wanting to direct you to his home when he returned. I could take you there now. Is it lavish? It is absolutely the most lavish place in Valaki. Oh, yes. well furnished? Yes, I suppose. With gold fixtures? In some, I believe, in some of the uh, family rooms, yes. Food? Oh, copious amounts. He has his own uh, cook on staff. Mm. See, you said you didn't like him at first, but I always liked him. No. He is a likable fellow. I, I'm going to try one last persuasion. I th- actually, I've never tried to persuade him. Mm. I did that on the card. Yes. I, will, I, I will try just to, just to persuade him to go over his own self-preservation instincts and just let us go. I know it's probably a difficult roll, but I could roll a 20. Okay. <laughs> uh, why not? A 16 plus... Six is a 22. Mm-hmm. So I say, look, how about we meet you at the Baron's house? So in effect, you are escorting us there indirectly. We will go there in a slightly more circuitous route, but with the understanding that that is our goal, to meet the Baron, and he is ready to speak with us. And you have our word on it as both a lord and a semi-professional vampire killer. Sure. So- and an actor! <laughs> So he, he um, I think this is probably the first break you see in, um, you know, his facial features here. You can tell he's he's genuinely nervous now um, about what it is you're suggesting that he does. Um, so he he, you know, he raises his hand and he's got a key, iron key in his hand, and he and he raises it to to and, and you know, and he puts the key in the lock and turns the key, uh, and he says, "Well, of course, I have complete." faith in you i please though the festivities are to end within the hour and you must be there before that takes place or else it will be me who will suffer for it within the hour yes the festivities. oh he's so he's he's got i looked at the others didn't you get the impression we had to wait all day for him hmm, i did i did that's my impression these don't sound like very festive festivities if it's within the hour, then uh, I suppose we can wait one more hour. I thought. No, I know. What, what are you? What, I, I, my friend is just he's confused. No, we will absolutely wait for him at his house. My cross, my heart. I yes, will be yes. standing at, there at his house. At his at house. His we, house. We will. We will present ourselves at the front door. You said within the hour. Yes, that necessary yeah, I mean, it, I, that would be beneficial to my preservation. Of course, if you came now with me, you know, that would certainly do my heart much better for the next <laughs> 60 minutes. <laughs> Can we oh, have we one have... moment to confer? I do like a tea sign with my hands. Sure. So See, your, your, charm, your charm spell, by the way, how long, what's the duration on that charm spell? One hour. Okay. That's uh, convenient. Okay. Yes. <laughs> why, why are we deliberating? He is offering to let us leave. What's the? Wh- wh- why are we deliberating? The quandary is: Do we go to the Baron's house? Because we can't go save. Um, no, Irina no. Of course hour. we don't. They're letting us go. We just leave. They're not actually letting us go. I'm, I'm coercing this man into letting us go. Yes, but he will then be suffer put the penalty. Spot. Yes. He's and, an awful person, though. Well, he hasn't actually done anything other than execute his duty, even though he's been rather annoying. I think he has, he, has, he has done more than that. He has abused power. He said it was going to be daybreak and then later an hour. So obviously he was going to let us just rot in here as he had a booze up. I, I, I just feel like we don't owe him anything. What do you think, McCrag? I say we wait. Ah, and uh, Master Sana? Official <sighs> vote. I say we wait for the Baron, but not here in this horrible, dank cell. Agree. 
You said we yes. actually go to his house. We don't run away. We actually go to his so house. Take Master Malik uh, and let him escort us through the town as the heroes that we are. And we choose the territory to meet this Baron. What if, what if you, um, what if you, Jean, as we go to the house, we sort of get the populace on our side, sort of rile them up with like festive airs and, ah. and like that little jests and, and tumbles and stuff. With and get them the sort tumbles? of the Tumbles? Tumbles? I, I never said I was a tumbler. Noble tumbles. You know, I, epic, epic tumbles. And then you get, we become pe- the, the, the people of the town. And then yes. the Baron can't go against us. And he'll be forced yes. by the Vox Populi to celebrate us and right. send us on our way. Okay, I, I think this will work, but I, I feel like McGrag should uh, have some sort of pom-poms uh, or something to kind of soften his appearance. Because he is great. Mm. Ring the town to our, to our side. Maybe some sort of fronds. How do you feel about Fronds. Fronds. Scarves or palm fronds, you know, something just to wave and they they don't have those things where I come from. What <laughs> what on earth do you speak of? It's Tom. it's sort of like if you were like, you know, oh, waving oh. around dead animals in a celebratory way. But instead of being dead, dead animals, animals all the... like, I can do dead animals. Okay, <laughs> but they're made out of ribbons. It's just it's just a festive okay. Anyway, all right, so yes. Uh, no, yes. no ribbons. No ribbons. <sighs> just think of them as like entrails. So silky entrails. What about real entrails? Uh, I turn uh, to Master Malik and I say, "We will accompany you directly to the house." Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, are we going to wardrobe first, or? <laughs> what you do with your wardrobe is entirely up to you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, John. This is your time to shine. <laughs> Yes, it always is. <laughs> do do come this way. Um, we will have to move quickly to not be caught in too much of the rain. And and Malik turns around and you know the door the cell door is now open and he expects you uh, clearly to yep. to follow him. Crit Faced is a weekly Dungeons and Dragons podcast. To make sure you never miss an episode, and to get an exclusive prequel episode of the podcast where you can find out what our characters were up to before this adventure began, head over to CritFacedPodcasts.com and join our Crit Faced fan group.